This is 2020. It's the year of unpredictability. Anything could happen. Who knows what might happen. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, that's, the scary, that's the scary part of all this. It is. We just don't know what's coming next. We begin tonight with millions of Americans in the path of multiple natural disasters. That deadly wildfire emergency in California. Stunning pictures of what was likely a terrifying drive through the Hennessy area of Northern California. These flames are part of a series of wildfires sweeping across the region. They're the largest the state has seen. Second and third largest fires in state history are expected to grow as new thunderstorms produce dry lightning and gusty winds. And more than a million acres have burned. That is more than four times larger than the area destroyed by fires in a typical year. California is under a historic fire siege with more lightning expected tonight. I've never seen something like this in 34 years fighting fire. Its residents are suffering. Tens of thousands have been forced to leave their homes. Overnight, the sprawl of more than 500 California wildfires surged in a relentless march of flames. Hardest hit, the north, where the state's largest fires are churning through wine country, incinerating homes, reducing whole neighborhoods to piles of rubble and ash. Oh no, oh no, no. Tonight in California, nearly a million acres scorched. Two of the largest fires in the state's recorded history raging out of control. Now, uh, two freak weather stories for you, because in Australia, Antarctic air reaching the southeast of the country has triggered snowfall across several states. We're being told to get ready for damage and disruptions as the strangest weather in 15 years hits New South Wales. Towns to the west of Sydney in the Blue Mountains have been blanketed by late winter snowfall. A few months ago, the region was battling bushfires, but this has been a treat for locals and visitors from Bathurst to Orange. Canberra and the Blue Mountains. A large mass of Antarctic air will bring the winter trifecta to New South Wales, snow, freezing temperatures and wild winds. What's unusual about this system um, is the snow level down to 500 metres. Wild winds will be back again, up to 90 kilometres per hour gusts. The cleanup continues at Gosford where scaffolding came down in yesterday's westerly as the state's far north battles the same natural enemy causing a different problem. Bushland burned in the summer's fires, now decorated with winter's best surprise, 10 days out from spring. Back to the Gulf Coast, could be experiencing something very rare. Two major storms making landfall just 48 hours apart. And this is the strongest hurricane to hit this part of the Gulf Coast in history. And take a look, video from Lake Charles, powerful winds tearing apart skyscrapers there. The Category 4 hurricane, just shy of a Category 5, one of the strongest hurricanes ever to strike that part of the country. Hurricane Laura rammed the Gulf Coast early this morning as a Category 4 hurricane. Watch as his RV was flipped onto its side as the storm moves in. Widespread catastrophic damage expected to be revealed. You can see power lines just littering the streets and igniting. Power surges leading to this massive fire. Roofs ripped clean off buildings. Trees snapped like twigs. This communications tower mangled. The monster storm bringing maximum sustained winds of 150 miles per hour. This is the, uh, ridge, the eye wall. You can see how visibility is going to zero now. This is where the hurricane slammed into the coast with winds up to 150 miles per hour. And from the air, it looks like roofs were ripped off of homes and walls were collapsed. The state is hit with one of the largest earthquakes in history, but people as far as south as far as south as Thompson, Georgia, and even Lake Harding in Alabama said they felt it too. It was like a slow rumble, like a wave of rumbles coming. You could hear it from a distance before it hit. It jolted people out of bed, put cracks in buildings, even knocked things off of store shelves. North Carolina jolted by its strongest earthquake today in about 100 years. The quake caught on camera at his family's salon until it was knocked off the shelf. Here at this food lion, food littered the aisles. 
Well, there is damage all over Sparta from water main breaks to cracked roads and even more. The impact felt as far away as Georgia, Northern Virginia and Tennessee. While many were shocked to be hit with the state's largest earthquake since 1916, surprising folks, many who were sleeping when it happened at 8.07 Sunday morning. Um, yeah, that was um, our cabin. Our uh, neighbor Ashley sent that in just up the street from us. Um, that was this morning at 8.07 and it woke us up. Um, we were in bed. We, I said to my husband right away, oh my gosh, it's an earthquake. Um, there was no mistaking it. Well, Allegheny County is still being rattled by earthquakes. The biggest, of course, yesterday, a 5.1 centered in Sparta. The U.S. Geological Survey says there have been 14 tremors since then, three as early as this morning. They were southeast of Sparta, as you can see on this map. In a matter of seconds, a historic earthquake felt across the eastern half of the country struck this small town. Upset and confused. Uh, we've never been through anything like this. back. Well, an asteroid the size of an SUV flew closer to the Earth than any other space rock ever recorded. This will happen Sunday morning and NASA didn't see the asteroid until it was gone. Researchers say the rock came from the direction of the sun. Now, even if it had crashed with Earth, it likely would have broken up in our atmosphere. 2020 has been one of the most exhausting years that anybody can remember. It's a film theme. <laughs> Afghans in Pawan province rescue their loved ones any way they can. Rain and flash floods soak the impoverished rural northern region. All over neighboring Pakistan, it's a similar scene of devastation after days of torrential rain. In the largest city, Karachi, polluted water from clogged drains flood streets, spilling into homes. Prime Minister Imran Khan says troops are being sent to help pump out water from flooded neighborhoods. This massive storage bin was no match for last week's derecho. This came crashing down. I've never seen anything like it. 
hurricane force winds plowed through Dennis Campbell's Iowa farm and much of the Midwest last week, leaving behind hurricane-like aftermath. Leaving a path of destruction stretching more than 700 miles from eastern Nebraska to western Ohio. The derecho, which means straight in Spanish, sped across 770 miles straight through the Corn Belt. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, uh, not as far as the widespread red nature of this wind event. And the effect on Iowa's crops is catastrophic. The derecho wiping out an estimated 10 million acres, up to 43 percent of the state's corn and soybean crops. Now in the brutal effects of the derecho that ripped through the Midwest five days after those 100 mile an hour winds. The downpour moved into Iowa Monday, leaving hundreds of thousands without power. Officials issued travel advisories as the storm downed trees and blocked roads. Pummeled by the high winds, a child's clubhouse started rolling like a tumble. Monday's fast-moving line of powerful thunderstorms catching many by surprise, slamming the Cedar Rapids area with destruction. The Atlantic storm season runs until November, and this one has the potential to be the busiest season ever. The U.S. National Hurricane Center is predicting there could be up to 25 big storms this year, double the average.